So, welcome to the next little uh, video from the Euroluna team. Over the last uh, month we've been upgrading and updating our mission plan for the tour to the moon and I would like to share what we have done with you today. Now, the basic structure is of course a timeline and we divide ourselves up in three main phases. The first is the release from the launch vehicle, where we've been very active. The second one is the space operation, and the third is the moon surface operation. If we look at the space uh, operation, we are dividing that into a number of subphases, starting with an initial uh, health check and attitude adjustment, uh, going on to the various rocket burns and finishing up with uh, the burn which uh, should land us uh, on the moon. Today I will speak a little bit about the initial space operation in details and about the first uh, rocket burn. So, uh, what we've done is that we have made a plan for how we come out of the storage bay. We start by doing uh, a health check uh, a minimum status of the systems on board, which is basically the onboard computer and the radio. And we're going to send back to uh, ground control uh, some information about where we are and how things are going, and we're going to repeat that as we go along. After approximately one turn, we plan to turn on the GPS, uh, get the coordinates, and start the transmission of the base signal plus our position uh, and time. After approximately two orbits, we plan to get also the inertia sensor and the solar panel inputs to give us an, an indication of our attitude and rotation around uh, the three axes of the spacecraft. And we will, of course, beam that uh, back to uh, the Earth. And after, again, one uh, tour around, we will be turning on the cameras. We will identify the moon, the sun, and the Earth, and use the onboard computer to calculate um, a position uh, based on what the cameras can see, though we know, of course, that uh, one of the cameras will actually simply be looking at Earth, or maybe uh, even more than one, because we are in low Earth orbit. We will get uh, the ground control uh, in operation. We will get an acknowledged sign <coughs> to uh, signal to the spacecraft. Uh, and we will thus have established uh, two-way uh, communication, linking all also up to the when we get the second ground control message there. Uh, it will uh, have, uh, if possible, some commands on board which will then uh, be executed by the onboard uh, computer. And that, let's say, will be the, uh, the, the standard situation that if the, the spacecraft receives a ground command, it will execute what it's doing. And if it's getting no uh, command from the ground, it will send the status on a regular basis. After the... Uh, initial health check, uh, we will then move on to what we can call the real space operation. And the first bit of that is to get the attitude under control. We will we'll be, of course, spinning in some way uh, along the, the, the three axes um, of the spacecraft. And the idea uh, and plan is that we are going to have the attitude control purely uh, under uh, ground control, which means that the spacecraft will not do any operation uh, on itself uh, to uh, ch ch check it and change its attitude. It will all be under underground control. After that phase, we will go to the uh, first phase of the, uh, uh, the space operation uh, with burning the rocket and starting us moving off from Earth. The time to launch uh, will be calculated by computers on Earth and the ground control will basically determine 
a set of launch, uh, send, send a set of launch parameters to uh, ROMIT, uh, the burn duration, uh, the delta V to be obtained, and the attitude control uh, parameters. We will check the fuel situation, we will get a confirmation, and only upon reconfirmation from ground control will we start the attitude uh, maneuver and the countdown uh, to uh, starting up the rocket motor. We're going to spin the, the aircraft, uh, the, the spacecraft, in such a way that we have longitudinal uh, stability. We are in detail going to start up our pumps and open our valves, uh, and that will then uh, and start the rocket motor. We will, as the burn progresses, we will uh, monitor our uh, inertia sensor on board and when the, the burn time uh, is uh, exceeded or the inertia sensors that we've got the delta V uh, required, we will switch off the valves and the pumps and inform uh, the ground control. That bit will be the, the burn itself and then as we start in our coast along in our new um, in our new orbit, we will have a health check, a GPS check, uh, and the attitude, um, and we will send that back to um, ground control. We will start the determination of positions by our onboard cameras and send those information back to the ground. And then basically every hour as we move, uh, we plan to signal the same information uh, back to uh, to the, the ground control. And with that, uh, I have given you the uh, overview of the work we've been doing and the plans we've been making for the last uh, months or so uh, on the first uh, bit of it. The second rocket burn we plan to do, of course, in a similar way and uh, we may have to have a correction uh, burn out at the weak stability boundary and they will all follow the same, uh, the same schema as you've seen here. So many thanks for your attention.